Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on solar flat plate collector. So first I will read what is the given problem. Estimate the temperature rise of water in a 100 liter capacity thermosiphon solar water heating system during typical day of operation. Estimate also electricity saved because of solar water heater and corresponding reduction in monthly electricity bill. Given data. Collector with absorber plate area 2 meter square. Solar radiation falling 5 kilowatt hour per meter square. Collector efficiency 50%. Specific heat of water 4.2 kJ per kilogram degree Celsius. Geyser efficiency 95%. Cost of electricity per unit 3.50 rupees. Initial temperature of water 20 degree Celsius. So this was the given data. Now let us first understand what is the thermosiphon solar water heating system. So if we observe this diagram here there are two main parts that is the storage tank and here is the second is the flat plate collector. Now if we observe this diagram the cold water enters at the storage tank and then it enters from the bottom of this solar flat plate collector. Now what is the function of this flat plate collector? It absorbs the solar energy and then the water is getting heated. Now when this cold water is getting heated then its density becomes lower and then it moves to the upward side. Now when the temperature increases then the water moves to the upward side and then here from this top pipe it enters to the storage tank and here from the top of the storage tank here the water is withdrawn for the use and this water is the hot water. So this thermosiphon system means what? Because the flow of water is natural. When the cold water enters from the bottom to this flat plate collector then the hot water because of low density it enters from the top to this storage tank so this uh, water flowing is in the natural way now we will understand what is the given data and which factors we have to find out so if we observe the given data that is the water quantity that means there is the total water quantity that is 100 liter then the collector with absorber plate area so this flat plate collector is having the absorber plate that is the area for which the solar radiations are getting absorbed 2 meters square then solar radiation falling so what is the rate of solar radiation falling so for 1 meter square it is 5 kilowatt hour then collector efficiency so this collector efficiency is given that is 50 percent then specific heat of water that is 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram degree celsius then geyser efficiency now instead of solar water heater if we move for the electricity then we will use the geyser and for that geyser that efficiency is given that is 95 percent then the cost of electricity per unit so the cost of electricity for the one unit is rupees 3.50 and initial temperature of water that is 20 degrees Celsius. That means when this cold water enters to the flat plate collector here is the initial temperature of water and when it leaves to the flat plate collector then here is the final temperature of water. Then we have to find out what is the temperature rise of water that means temperature rise of water that too how much temperature is getting rise so here is the initial temperature and here is the final temperature then electrical energy saved so instead of solar flat plate collector if we use the geyser then what will be the amount of bill monthly electricity bill that we have to find out and this energy is the free energy because solar energy is free of cost so how much electrical bill we have to pay that we have to find out now we will move for the first question then what is the temperature rise in water so how to calculate this so if we observe here the structure solar radiation incident on the flat plate collector 
and then the energy absorbed by this collector is given to the water and then there is the rise in temperature of the water so how we can write this therefore the energy absorbed by the collector is equal to the enthalpy change in water that means whatever is the heat store that we have to find out so what is the energy absorbed by the collector so how to calculate so for that we will write solar radiation incident on the collector per unit area per day multiplied by the collector area multiplied by the collector efficiency and now how to calculate the enthalpy change in water so which factors are responsible for this enthalpy change so we can write here e is equal to mass of water heated per day multiplied by the specific heat of water multiplied by the rise in temperature now if we observe the left hand side here the solar radiation incident and that is given 5 kilowatt hour per meter square and what is the specific heat of water that is given 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram degree celsius so here the right hand term is in the kilojoule so we will convert this 5 kilowatt into kilojoule so how to convert this so kilowatt means what kilowatt means kilojoule per second kilowatt is equal to kilojoule per second so how we can convert this term in the kilojoule so we have to also convert this time into second so here is the hour that is in one hour so in one hour how many seconds are there so in a one hour there are 60 minutes and in one minute there is the 60 seconds so we can say that one hour is equal to 60 multiplied by 60 seconds that is 3600 seconds so how i can write this solar radiation incident on the collector that is equal to 5 multiplied by 3600 means what if i multiply with this 3600 second then the second second is getting cancelled then i will take collector area so what is the collector area that is 2 meter square and what is the collector efficiency 50% that means 50 by 100 so i will take here 0.50 which is equal to mass of water heated per day so here this is the water quantity is given 100 liter so uh, we have to take it then specific heat of water that is 4.2 that we have to take multiplied by rise in temperature so for this rise in temperature i will use here the delta t so when we calculate this we will get what is the value of delta t that is equal to 43 degree celsius that is the temperature difference in between this inlet and outlet that is delta t is 42 43 degree celsius now how we can calculate this final temperature so we know what is the initial temperature of water that is 20 degree celsius that means ti is equal to 20 degree celsius therefore we can say that tf that is final temperature minus initial temperature which is equal to 43 now we will put here the value tf minus 20 which is equal to 43 therefore final temperature that is tf is equal to 43 plus 20 that is 63 degree celsius now we will move for the second question so second question is what is the electrical energy saved so how to find out this so for that that is for required output so what is the output here that is this change in enthalpy of the water so if we observe the given data the geyser efficiency is given so what is the meaning of efficiency that is output by input and what is the output here that is the enthalpy change in water and what is the input so input we have to find out in terms of what is the electrical energy supplied to the geyser so here the input that means we have to find out the electrical energy and what is the unit of electrical energy that is kilowatt hour so i will write here in denominator this unit is kilowatt hour and what is the efficiency efficiency is given 95% that is 95 divided by 100 that is 0.95 which is equal to now what is the output 
so output also we have to write in kilowatt hour because this efficiency has no unit so what is the output so if we observe here the solar radiation falling is given in 5 kilowatt hour per meter square that is for 1 meter square it is given as a 5 so how to find out this output so this output that is the enthalpy change in water which is equal to energy absorbed by the collector. So energy absorbed by the collector that we have to find out in terms of kilowatt hour because this kilowatt hour kilowatt hour will be getting cancelled and we will equate this to the efficiency which is having no unit. So now we will write here the output. So energy absorbed by the collector. So solar radiation incident on the collector. So we have to write this in the kilowatt hour so i will write here phi so this phi is having the unit kilowatt hour per meter square so if we multiply it with collector area that is 2 meter square then this denominator meter square and this meter square will be getting cancelled and then we have to write the collector efficiency now this collector efficiency is also having no unit so i will write here 50% that means 0 0.50 divided by input. So how to find out this input? Now this equation is correct because if we observe the left hand side and right hand side this kilowatt kilowatt hour is getting cancelled and then here this equal to efficiency which is having no unit. Now we have to find out the input. So what I will consider here therefore input in kilowatt hour is equal to I will calculate this so what is the calculation that is 5 kilowatt hour divided by 0 0.95 so if I calculate this that is 5 divided by 0 0.95 then I will get input is equal to 5.26 kilowatt hour so this is our input now we have to find out what is the electrical energy saved in terms of cost so for this kilowatt hour this is the daily electrical energy that we have to supply to the geyser to achieve this enthalpy change in water so what is the cost cost of electricity for the one unit is 3.50 so we will take so this is the value for the input electrical energy for one day so cost or the electrical electrical cost per day is equal to 5.26 multiplied by 3.50 so what is this cost that is equal to 18.42 or we can say rupees 18.42 for one day or here per day now we will use this cost for calculation of the per month. So what is the cost? So electrical cost for the month. Cost for one month. That is equal to 18.42 multiplied by 30. That means in one month we will consider the other number of days 30. So which is equal to rupees 5. 53 so this is the answer